Alright, so we're back with another Argo episode. Uh, last time we put the new battery in and uh, we test run it for a little while. We're still under lockdown, but uh, that's okay, we'll do what we can. Today we're going to look at fitting a winch, or at least doing some initial design for it. Um, in the last episode, this main spar here busted. I did some emergency repairs off camera, put a lot of tape on things, and it's still busted in the wind. Um, the wind was strong enough to use these two ropes here to actually lift this Argo and shift it. Um, so it was some serious wind. But fortunately I've been able to use a couple of extendable tent poles and a hacksaw. And I've been able to make a temporary fix along the roof. This whole structure is temporary. I also discovered that I'd put the fly on inside out, which I'm not about to correct at this point. Um, it does mean I'm probably not going to put, bother putting the sides up, but we'll see how we go with that. Um, at the moment, I'm not going to move the Argo, it's roped to everything for ballast. Uh, but the forecast is pretty uh, subdued for the next few days. And as you can tell, there's ropes freaking everywhere. Alright, so let's get around to the front here. So, um, when I originally looked at buying one of these, I saw how a lot of the winches were mounted. And they're all mounted on the front here. And I thought hiding behind this badge might be three pre-drilled uh, pre or pre-threaded winch mounting holes. In reality, there isn't. If we go around and look at the other side here, there's nothing. So, I don't think I can just whack three bolts through that and hook a winch on there, because I think I'll probably rip them out. I probably need to come up with a doubler plate on the other side. Now, I could buy a factory winch kit for this and the bar and everything, but I'm up to close to a thousand dollars by the time I do that. My winch is worth like a hundred dollars and uh, there's a good chance that it's going to get dunked under water a lot of times. So I'd rather continue using cheap winches and just replace them as needed. Um, now I could easily put a doubler plate across this whole front end here but uh, there's this nice gusset along here that I want to try and make use of that strength. Now a lot of them have a little piece that's down here and a reinforcing flap that goes around all of that. Um, I'm thinking my choice might be better to put that reinforcing on the inside as a doubler plate and have the winch mounted here so that the force is pulling from the inside and not just relying on bolts on the outside. Um, I'm not sure I want to really mount anything through the gussets here. Um, and it looks like they haven't done much to waterproof these two sections, they've just shoved this rubber joiner over it uh, and that's uh, partly because the water line sits down about here so uh, at least <laughs> with me in it I don't know how that's going to be I'm about 140 clicks I also need to move because I'm getting covered in concrete ants or pavement ants as we can see down here my whole yard is infested with these as is all the neighbors yards they're a uh, polymorphic multi-queen species and uh, they live under concrete slabs, which there are many of in this yard. So uh, they've invaded all the neighbouring properties and they're all part of the same colony. So that'll be a job later on. Now, the other thing I'm going to look at doing is oil change at some point in the future. About when I get to the 5 or the 8 hour mark. But uh, for now, we're only at about 3.5 hours. So I'm going to need to wait until I get out and about in this before I give it a bit more of a low speed driving and run that engine in. Um, I'm going to check on battery volts as was suggested in one of the other videos. Um, and I'm going to come up with a voltmeter. But probably today I'm going to measure up and try and work out if I can get a custom made um, plate. And feeling on the inside there that contour does is pressed all the way through. So I might make a nice little profiled doubler plate to fit in behind this and slot into that so it's nicely located. Um, and then I'll see if I can get the Argo badge off. If I do it right, I might be able to get the Argo badge on the winch mount somewhere. I'll figure that out. But I want to have a nice little flat platform out here to mount the winch on. But uh, we should probably go find a said winch and uh, see what that looks like. All right, so next on the agenda in the next few days during lockdown is cleaning up my shed. Um, this area here should actually be 
able to be moved through but uh, I've been moving stuff out of this corner for ages and using this area as a dumping ground and now I need to clean it up but I have found a winch and it's on its own shelf unusually probably because it's new so let's drag this out and uh, see what we can do about it all right so first thing we're going to do is look at some ratings here this is supposed to be rated to be able to pull 680 kilograms and this thing is 450 nearly 500 so in principle i should be able to winch it up a tree not that i'm planning on doing that um, gods must be crazy style that's a movie if you've never heard of it um so let's get this out of the box and see what we can sort of do with this combination of brackets all right so we have things loosely unpacked and uh, this winch if you haven't seen my donations and deliveries video the hand controller here which is heavy um, looks like it takes the full load across the switches there doesn't seem to be any relay switching I guess that's one way of doing it uh, but it does make the winches the winch drive very simple so uh, I don't mind that on something like this I bought this because it's simple <laughs> big and hunky stuff easy to fix in the field we will get a little baby fair lead rollers um, that'll be all good they mount to this plate and I've got to be careful if I drop everything here because this thing is kind of made like Teflon and everything slips so the fair lead mounts on these two screws and this plate is our winch plate now the temptation would be to mount it something like that and let the cable come out at some horrible angle um, I'm not a big fan of that idea I'd much rather mount it flat like this and have everything work properly so that means I'm going to need to make a bracket and I'm kneeling on the ground in the ant's nest again I'm getting attacked so uh, I need to make some sort of bracket to fit down there so I think what we'll need to do is measure up around here in this nice little profile make a double plate to go in the rear and then make a right angle piece to come out here now probably what I'm going to do is get this plasma cut and get bent at a local sheet metal factory the idea behind this is that I'm spending what I can locally during this lockdown and the economic downturn at the moment or crash or the, I don't know what's going on but the stock market is crashing. So uh, I'm going to spend as much as I can locally and some of my government stimulus package to do that. So um, yeah, so I'll make a nice little thing here and I might also on that bracket, if it's wide enough, make a couple of little flange gussets on the side here. Um, to try and just strengthen everything um, I'm not sure at this stage where other I want to have it up the front here it seems fairly strong um, and I gather if this thing's bogged I'm not going to need a lot of force on here just enough to help the traction one of the reasons I'm so worried about this is my homework I'm looking at all the videos on YouTube of people driving these the guys without the tracks are the ones that get bogged in like really soupy like gluggy mud um, these the wheel system doesn't seem to be all that great in the really soupy bottomless mud um, so I do intend to put tracks on it but I also expect to get stuck and with this thing there's a good chance I'm gonna get stuck where literally nobody can get to me so I'm gonna have to be able to help myself so I'm not really keen to go very far without the winch on it so yeah that'll be the first thing this was also a super cheap auto special I paid about 120 bucks for this um, I can get something probably a bit bigger and beefier for about 80 bucks out of China um, but this was in the country and it pays local workers so um, there's probably just enough cable on that drum but that's not a hard thing to change I can put different amounts of cable on there if I need to or I can get some Dyneema rope but um, all in all um, yeah I think we've just got to do some measurements now all right, so it's taken me a couple of days to get back to this, but it's time to uh, take some measurements um, of this area up here so I can make a CAD design, and then I'll cut some timber test pieces. I'm going to have to get a little creative to figure out, or I'm going to have to get creative rather, to work out how to get this uh, drop angle here, although it does look fairly close to 90 degrees. Um, I might have to laser cut myself some measurement tools, uh, which will be fun in itself. Um, but at this point, what I am going to do is I'm going to use this video myself um, to get the measurements from this rather than 
uh, taking notes. So, camera there, guys, you're going to be my uh, assistant. So, uh... That shouldn't be too hard to do, um, provided I don't cock up the design of the tool. Um, so yeah, I guess we can jump into AutoCAD and we can make a little test piece in here. Um, and I'll make that at a 3mm MDF just as a test guide. Once I get it right, then I'll take my laser cut test guides down to the local sheet metal place and uh, get them to cut them up for me. Um, it'd be quicker than getting it CNC'd at this point, especially with Easter and all happening. Um, yeah, and now uh, I don't want to put my winch down here because the water line is down there. I want to keep it above this bit here, so when we are entering water, I'll probably dunk the winch occasionally, but um, for the most part, it should stay out of the water. And uh, I don't want to rip all the bolts all through this bit. I do want a nice doubler plate in here. So, um, yeah. I guess that's about all the information I need to measure it up. It is getting dark now, but... Um, yeah, I've had all my Argo episodes a bit out of order lately. So let's um, let's get ourselves back inside and into AutoCAD. All right, so I've roughly transcribed my uh, notes from my video and a, just a general reminder sketch here of the tool I need to make to get angles right. Um, so yeah, this is pretty much how I'm going to do it with the measurements. And uh, let's jump into AutoCAD. I'll get some screen capture software out here and we'll... we'll um, you can see how I do things in AutoCAD, probably in high speed. Could be time I give up on this pergola and I just move it undercover. Overnight it's torn all the sides off. I've done everything I can to rope it down but it's starting to destroy itself. I was hoping this might last longer than a few days but yeah it was wishful thinking. Yeah. Alright, so the storm's died down a bit, but uh, clearly it didn't survive as well this time. I think I'm going to pull a few sections out of this and lay it on the ground at least. And I'm going to go and get some sleep. I was up till 3 o'clock this morning on this. Well, this about does it for the shelter. So I guess we're parking under the under the back entryway again. Now well the proverbial happens I guess. Time to pack this up. Alright, so it's time to fire up the laser cutter and actually cut some stuff. I'm gonna make a quick change to my um, 
uh, I forget the correct name for these things, uh, but my angle gauge that I'm uh, designing in AutoCAD. I'm going to make a couple quick changes to that so I can actually measure the angle properly. Um, however, um, we should be pretty right. I think I can cut a few test pieces. And the Argo is now safely undercover out here now with all the other junk. So yeah, well uh, I have to do some cleaning up now. Alright, so let's get this laser cutter fired up. Right, we're back in the front of the Argo, and you'll have to excuse the background noise, I'm still testing that damn generator. It's uh, done nearly nine hours on three litres of fuel so far. Anyway, I have my crude little um, angles gauge here, and we're going to measure the angle in the back here, if I can get away with that um, at all. In fact, <laughs> this thing's predictably too long, so I didn't think this through quite so well. Um, now I've dropped it. We'll get our angle in a minute. Alright, so I took a bit of a gamble and I cut this piece that's 150 degrees. Um, and that's a little bit too much. So I guess I'll shave this down until it fits about right and then we'll measure that. Um, I probably need to find a protractor. I do have the right bit of gear somewhere but I can't find it for the life of me. Alright, so uh, I've trimmed this down to 120 degrees and it's uh, pretty bloody close. Bar maybe a couple of degrees. I think for the purposes of a winch double plate it'll be fine. Um, it should mean if there's any sort of flex in here it should pull up against this and sort of help spread that weight out. Uh, worst case scenario I can put some sealer or something under there like T-Rex glue or something. So I think 120 degrees is about right and that would make sense if they did this in a CAD program 30 degrees would have been a polar snap setting um, so 30 plus 2 is 60 plus 120 so yeah it works out right okay so um, let's go and cut out our double plate and see if it fits in here although yeah I'm hoping that'll fit there is a cable loom there I've got to be careful of so let's let's cut our double plate Alright, so that poor little generator is still holding out, but here's our doubler plate. Um, moment of truth time to see if it fits in here. Actually it fits pretty nicely, it doesn't, it doesn't interfere with the, um, the natural curvature, so I'm happy with that and we can shove it right up in the top. And it hugs those corners pretty nicely, I could go a little bit more conservative, but um, it would be nice if it just stays there. So of course I need to get a few more measurements now, um, but yeah, I think the other plate on the front, I might shape it like the Argo logo, and uh, then it won't look so bad I don't think. Um, but anyway, that, that double plate's going to work, um, I need to work out how to make that piece off the bottom now, 
so uh, yeah, I've got a little bit more work to do yet, but uh, yeah, a bit more design work. So we've got some test pieces done here. So we've got our not always getting notifications. I think it's a Google thing. Once you um, unlock your phone, you get notifications. So that should sit there, and that will sit there nicely, right? In fact, even if they sit out a little bit, that's still fine. And then these little spaces should fit that angle just nicely. All right, cool. Now the next piece of cut is this piece, and this has got bend test lines on it. Um, now, crucially, the inside and outside double plates should line up somewhere here. You go, all three holes line up nicely there. Um, now this should mount on the outside. This piece will fold up like so, a winch, winch will mount there, and then this piece will fold up like that and hold our guide. Now that we know needs to be 30 degrees off the vertical, but I'll work out an exact angle. I'm guessing it's going to be something like that. But anyway, even if it's at 90 degrees, that's fine. This holds the winch up a little bit higher. So, um, I think we're about right. That's about as far as we can go at the moment. Um, but what it means is I can give this pile of stuff to my sheet metal guy and he can use them as templates to cut some bits out. Um, if not, I can supply some, some, I can supply CAD files and they can go and get it machine cut somewhere. Anyway, um, let's go and test if this fits our winch. All right, so um, our hole is adjusted slightly, albeit somewhat crudely. But the bloke that will be cutting these out, I know him personally, it's very easy to explain what needs to be done there. Um, the positioning for the most part is correct. So, that's my templates done. And this is why I do them out of MDF, they're easy to rework. Um, so yeah, I can pretty well um, take them down to the sheet metal joint. So, that'll pretty much be the episode, end of this episode, because I've got a fair bit more to do. And uh, this will take some time and money, obviously, to manufacture. And um, yeah, we'll see it uh, when it arrives. But uh, hopefully we'll be on to another episode of Argo stuff. We'll see you all um, in the next one. Hope it was fun.